The AV-8B Plus flies out for Italy in War Thunder. Let's check it out. What we're looking at in War Thunder is the AV-8B Plus Harrier, a naval strike aircraft in rank 8 of the Italian tech tree at battle rating 11.7. This jet has a full ballistics computer, including the EEGS, as well as built-in night vision and a FLIR system, but no optical zoom on the FLIR. It carries the ANALR-67 radar warning receiver, which is a directional-based unit with all of the usual top-tier features. Its radar is the ANAPG-65Q. This set has pretty good range, multiple pulse Doppler modes, IFF, track wall scan, and multiple ACM targeting frames. This is a really good radar set, and notably, it shows up as an F-18 on most top-tier radar warning receivers. For loadouts, this Harrier 2 can take air-to-air -air missiles, a whole bunch of options for bombs, rocket pods, laser-guided bombs, and anti-tank missiles, along with a fully-featured targeting pod. To get a gun, you've got to take the gun pod in your loadout, which mounts the GAU-12 cannon to the underside of the plane. This is a hard-hitting gun, and it comes with 300 rounds. Its air-to-air -air missiles are the AIM-9L and AIM-9M. These are both high-performance, all-aspect infrared missiles, with the 9 mic generally being a better choice as it has infrared counter-counter measures and it's smokeless. Its anti-tank missile is the AGM-65D. This is an IR version of the Maverick with pretty good range and a strong warhead. Just keep in mind that this is a slow missile and it's going to take some time to get where it's going. Lastly, the Harrier 2 can take two different types of laser-guided bombs, the GBU-12 and the GBU-16. The 16s are much larger with a larger blast radius, but you can take more than twice as many GBU-12s if you want to. The flight performance of the AV-8B is a bit unique in its tier. The main thing to understand is that this is a very light jet, and it has to be for its VTOL capabilities. But that also means that external ordnance can make up a significant portion of the overall weight of the plane. If you go flying out with a full load of fuel, full rack of bombs, and all that, really it's a completely different aircraft than if you were to fly out with half-empty tanks and just one pair of sidewinders. You're going to notice this difference far more than in most other aircraft, and sometimes if you get intercepted on a ground attack sortie, you'll have to ditch your air-to-ground weapons to survive the ensuing dogfight. Be prepared for that, and don't hesitate to abandon your bombs if it feels like you're not getting the performance you need. Generally speaking, when loaded properly, this jet has excellent agility, a good rate of climb, and outstanding acceleration thanks to its high thrust-to-weight ratio. The problem is, it's top speed. This is very much a subsonic jet, and realistically, you're going to be keeping it below around Mach 0.92 to avoid any problems. In a clean configuration, the jet can break Mach 1 in a dive without ripping apart, but in level flight, it's still subsonic, and with a weapon load, you can risk structural failures in crazy max-G maneuvers at higher speeds. The other thing to mention, obviously, is that this is a VTOL jet. I've gone over VTOL flight controls in other vids, but this version of the Harrier does just fine with viffing, short takeoffs, rolling landings under VTOL thrust, and all the other functions that you'd expect from a thrust vectoring aircraft. The only real caveat is that some weapon and fuel loads can make the jet too heavy for vertical takeoff, so that might be something to keep in mind. When you take the AV-8B Plus out in air battles, it's often an entirely different experience from most other top-tier jets. This Harrier's subsonic speed is a limiting issue, and you might find yourself in situations where the rest of the team has shot out ahead just as the battle is starting to heat up. You can sometimes end up getting left out on your own, which is always a vulnerable position, but there's a bit of a silver lining. I noticed a few times that I'd end up getting to the midfield fight right as the red team was starting to turn in towards my buddies, and if I was careful on my approach and zigzagged through the terrain and stuff to try and avoid getting noticed, 
it wasn't too hard to get a good surprise attack and flank some enemy players as they're trying to line up medium range missile shots in the early game. Not always, but this happened enough that I noticed the pattern. Generally though, this Harrier in the current meta does well at close and dogfighting, but its lack of long range weapons is a problem. The 9 Mike will get most of your kills, but remember it's still primarily a short range dogfight missile, so you're going to have to get in close to really use this jet's performance and weapons effectively. The light weapon load of only 4 missiles can also be an issue, as you get fewer weapons than almost all of the other top tier jets you go up against. It's still a fun and effective jet, it's just a different meta than you might be used to. For ground attack, this jet does just fine at bombing, and in close air support it usually does quite well. It's much easier to accurately target the Mavericks if you use a targeting pod, and I included a clip of using them without it so you can see what I'm talking about, but my preference is actually the laser guided bombs. The Mavericks are fire and forget, and they're safer to use. But, if a target dies after you fire it, the shot is wasted, where the LGBs can be retargeted mid-flight if your target hides or gets blown up or something like that. In the end though, all of its weapons are very effective, and this jet will adapt pretty well to a whole bunch of different playstyles flying out over a ground battle. To look at this jet's history, Back in 1937, Italy went through some military reforms, and one of the resulting policies was a law that stipulated fixed-wing aircraft were to be operated exclusively by the Air Force, with only very specific exceptions. That law remained in place into the late 1980s, and it wasn't until 1989 that the Italian Navy was legally allowed to operate fixed-wing combat aircraft. Once it was, they immediately set about procuring an air wing to operate from their carrier, the Garibaldi, which at the time was only operating helicopters. The small size of the carrier mandated operating a very small aircraft, with the Harrier family being a pretty obvious choice. The Sea Harrier and the Harrier II were evaluated against each other, with the AV-8B Harrier II being chosen in late 89, but it took all the way until 1995 for Italian Harriers to deploy operationally aboard an Italian aircraft carrier. Specifically, the Italian Navy operates the AV-8B Harrier II Plus, a slight upgrade over the original Harrier II, which included an upgraded engine, compatibility with a wider range of night vision equipment, addition of an APG-65 radar set, and expanded weapons compatibility. A total of 115 were built for the Italian Navy, Spanish Navy, and U.S. Marine Corps, with Italy currently operating 14 AV-8B pluses. Since the mid-90s, Italian Harriers have flown in combat in a small handful of operations, but are slated to be phased out of service and replaced with the F-35. Visually, this plane looks pretty much like the other Harriers. It's a fun-looking jet. But the custom paint jobs we get are all very similar. You may want to hit up War Thunder Live if you like decorating your planes a bit more. Landing this jet is very simple thanks to its VTOL capabilities. I've gone over VTOL controls in other videos, and this plane operates the same as the others. For horizontal landings, just remember you don't get a drag chute. The cockpit on this jet is excellent. Two huge MFDs in good spots, a useful heads-up display, and great overall visibility. This plane is excellent in VR, and I gotta say, doing VTOL stuff with the VR headset is really fun. To close out on the AV-8B+, this jet has a fully featured combat system, its air-to-ground loadouts are very strong, it's reasonably agile and can perform well in dogfights, and it can do VTOL stuff. However, it's subsonic, it doesn't have any BVR air-to-air -air weapons, and its quantity of air-to-air -air missiles is a bit low. The final verdict on the Italian AV-8B Plus is that this jet feels like, over the long run, it's going to be a bit more suited for close air support. It does okay in air battles, but the low quantity of missiles and subsonic speed really do hold it back more than you might think, and you'll almost never carry the team with this one. As always, 
Thanks for watching.